Hello everyone, my name is Pixel Rifts, and welcome back to the Minecraft Survival Guide. I hope you guys are having a good day. Today, we are back at the Ski Village, and you might be wondering what is going on with Minecraft 1.15. When is that coming out? It's supposed to be coming out today. But of course, because I have to record these videos ahead of time, I don't have access to all of the lovely new bees and honey blocks and honeycomb and things like that that will be arriving with the update later today. Hopefully I will have some of that action for you tomorrow, but instead today we do have to wait a little bit for the update to be released. And I feel like we should make ourselves another farm over here, specifically because I need some more of this stuff, not the squid ink, although the squid ink is kind of useful every now and again. What I need is some more ice. We're going to be working with ice a fair amount over here. Ice and snow are going to be quite obvious and quite useful blocks to decorate the ski village and this arctic biome. I keep calling it arctic, alpine <laughs> is what I'm going for. This alpine biome with this lovely snowy biome. And while there is, of course, a lot of of ice available to me in the river here, it is a little bit of a pain to collect it this way because you can break all of the ice like this but then it dips down under the surface of the water and it spreads out in all sorts of different directions and you have to swim around to collect it all up. Sometimes it gets stuck underneath the ice and sometimes the ice reforms and then when you've jumped in a hole like this you realize you can't get back out again and then you have to break a block like this in order to get a water source that will allow you to do that. Basically it's a bit of a pain to deal with and so what I've decided I should probably do is set up a brand new slow more high-tech ice farm over here and you may remember the episode in which we built our previous ice farm in a mountain above Founders Forge and that was really just a water pool at a height where it could freeze over in the mountain biome with a bunch of blocks separating the two sides of the farm diagonally so that water sources would reform on the inside of it. If you haven't watched that episode already, go ahead and watch it if you want to look at a small scale ice farm for occasional ice needs. But what I want really here is something on a slightly larger scale simply so we have enough ice that we can craft it into packed ice and maybe even blue ice if we have an abundance of the stuff. So we are talking industrial scale and also with a bit more industrial equipment involved. I want to do an ice farm that involves separating the ice from the water sources as quickly as we possibly can using pistons and stuff like that. And so today we are going to be building a redstone powered ice farm. And we're probably going to build that somewhere over here out of the way of the site where we are building the ski resort but somewhere still inside this snow biome because the snow biome will actually have any water sources on the surface freeze if they do not have blocks above them or if they are not waterlogged blocks of other kinds which is going to allow us to basically build an ice farm at any altitude we want to. In this case I'm going to build it over here on the flat ground probably maybe on top of one of these hills or something like that we can make a start and then we can build out because we'll need some space underneath it for the ice to come down and form effectively a solid block because it's going to be pushed down here by pistons. Now when I'm talking about it being a piston powered ice farm, unfortunately I don't want to call it an automatic ice farm because that would be a bit of a misnomer. It isn't really possible to harvest the ice automatically unless you were standing somewhere holding down the left click button with a silk touch pickaxe and there have been some AFK ice farm designs it might be possible to build if we wanted it. However, what I'm really looking for is something that allows a lot of ice to form in an area that we can just come in and gather it in one large clump and then take that away while it produces more ice in the background for us. Effectively, allowing me to spend a bunch of time in this area and have ice produce itself over here in the meantime. Now there are a few aspects of this design that I'm going to explain ahead of time. First of all, we could make this quite high because the amount of blocks a piston can push is up to 12. Once it hits 13, they're not able to push anymore. But basically, I don't think we want to go much taller than about four or five blocks. I think five is probably the upper limit because I want to be able to harvest all of this from ground level. Or if I build a platform out over this, I suppose, I don't want to have to worry about going up and down scaffolding and on separate platforms. Even though that would produce a little bit more ice, I really just want to be able to go over here and carve out a huge section of ice here and that's all I'll really need to worry about. So I think we're going to be building it. Yeah, that's one, two, three. Uh, I think we'll probably put a fourth block on top of there and then I think that's all we will do for now. Of course we could build this out 
in this direction and have it push down a little bit further, but I don't know. We'll see how we get on. Next, we all need a bunch of spruce slabs or some kind of slabs anyway, because we're going to take advantage of the fact that slabs can be waterlogged and will not turn into ice. So we're going to have two sides of the farm that basically reform water sources in the middle, and that's what ends up creating the ice in the center. Now, I think what we're going to do is come up here and we're going to make this quite a long farm. The reason I want it to be quite a long one in particular is because ice takes a while to freeze over. And if we're going to be having this whole thing patrolled by piston flying machines, it's going to have to be quite long or the time between the flying machine sweeps is going to have to be quite long so that ice has time to form because as the pistons come through here to push the ice if they end up disturbing the water sources then that's potentially going to reset the timer that water source has before it turns into ice it is kind of random and i could not find a great deal of information about this on the minecraft wiki so some of my facts may be a little bit off here but basically we are trying to avoid preventing the ice from freezing over by disturbing it in the middle of the freezing process so this whole thing is going to be six blocks wide and it's probably going to be at least 40 or 50 blocks long i would estimate make it as long as you want really but i do think longer is going to be better in this case either that or you'll have to put a little bit of delay between the flying machines taking off from one end or the other if you want the ice to form up nice and easily you know what for the sake of convenience here let's just make it a stack of blocks long so we're gonna have a 64 block long farm terminating somewhere over here we're actually going to have two rows of slabs one on either side here so i do actually need to make this central section here eight blocks wide let's go one two further out like that is that right one two three four five six seven eight yes there we go and we're going to put slabs i'll put these here now for demonstration purposes there and there so the channel in the center is six blocks wide and then we're going to start the opposite wall here like so and we're going to go down a stack of blocks on this side as well now the next thing we're going to want to do is create a floor on the inside of here and that's obviously going to take quite a few stacks of blocks we will need <laughs> eight stacks of blocks for the floor in here but these are going to be temporarily placed here at least these ones here are i think we can probably claim six stacks back from the center here once the pistons start pushing this stuff down but bear with me while i fill out the rest of this floor in fact filling out this floor is going to take quite a bit of time so i think i'm just going to cut away and we'll come back once we're ready to start filling up the farm with water Hey folks, welcome back. So I decided that the platform was actually a little bit too short after all, and I've extended it by another 64 blocks. So what we have here is a 128 block long platform now flanked on both sides with spruce slabs and with blocks at the end. The blocks at the end are really kind of temporary for now. They are just there to contain the water, which is what we're going to do now. I'm going to pop down a water bucket in one of these slabs, waterlogging it, and we're going to be doing the same with all of the slabs along both sides. Now, this isn't going to form water sources in the middle quite yet, because as you probably know, if you put two water sources this far apart, they are going to flow like this. They are not going to form a full water source between them. So we are going to have to do a little bit of patching up here and there. Of course, the the slabs aren't going to waterlog themselves unless we do that manually with a bucket, but they do form water sources if you have a set of water sources on this side over here, and then the water sources connect up on the other side like this. There you go. So they form natural water sources along there like that. So the process of covering all of the slabs over here with water is a little bit tedious, but it's not really going to take all that much time if you do it in this order. Of course, one of the crucial things you have to do here is make sure that you do not have any blocks above the farm because water blocks need Need direct sky access in order to convert into ice blocks which means we are going to have to make sure that we don't build anything above this and you cannot build it underground even if you're in a cold biome like this it just won't work that way so now we have this entire strip of water sources along the sides here the ones that are waterlogged slabs will not start to form ice blocks but down the end here already you can start to notice that the ones that don't have slabs in that space will start to become ice and the cool thing about this is with the cool thing, of course, this is an ice farm. I would say that eventually. The cool thing about this is that we are going to have piston flying machines pushing all of the ice blocks in the center downwards. And you might be worried about that actually pushing the water out of the bottom of the farm, but it's not actually going to do that because there is a full ice block in the way. And so as these get pushed downwards by the pistons, it's still going to keep a solid floor even after we end up removing all of the stone bricks from around here. 
Now, of course, the one concern here is making sure the water sources can reform afterwards. And so we're not going to let the entire thing freeze over. In fact, the flying machines are going to be running across this pretty regularly, and they are going to be pushing the ice downwards, which is going to be allowing the water sources on the surface to reform. If there are two water sources diagonally or two water sources horizontally they are going to be able to reform water sources which are then going to be able to turn into ice again so really you don't have that much to worry about here the next problem and this is one that's going to be kind of interesting to figure out how we resolve this is that ice needs an adjacent solid horizontal block in order to form like that bit of ice just did there conveniently enough you'll notice that no ice has formed anywhere in the middle of the farm it's only forming at the very ends and so we're actually going to have to section this farm off into a bunch of smaller cells with some solid blocks and in this case I'm going to use furnaces for this which might seem a little bit strange but the point of this of course is that furnaces are non-pushable blocks they're not going to be able to be pushed by the pistons when we sweep the entire farm the pistons are only going to be pushing the ice blocks so I think we're going to leave rows of furnaces every four blocks inside the farm itself so the next one can go there so with that done the farm is sectioned off into areas which are mostly four blocks wide occasionally I miscounted and there's a five block wide section here and there I could probably fix that if I cared but ultimately it's not going to make that much of a difference the main thing here is that we're going to have a bunch of flying machines going over here or at least one flying machine with a bunch of pistons and that is going to be pushing the ice downwards now the problem with the setup uh, phase here is that this section here or, or any of these sections has been completely frozen over in the meantime so by the time we set up the flying machines it's going to be pushing down a large area of ice and if we move all of that ice out of the way the water sources aren't going to be able to flow together and uh, reform full water sources that could then refreeze and flowing water will not freeze so that's going to be a bit of a problem that we will have to resolve once we have the flying machines set up but after that we should be able to leave them running and they will actually not have to worry about the whole thing freezing over the water sources should not freeze over in enough time for it to come back through and push the ice out of the way and reform again so hopefully this will all work out as planned and we can always tweak a couple of things about it if not i also have a plan to make a kind of fail safe for when the farm has pushed the uh, ice down out of here to the limit basically as far as it will go uh, and that basically involves just switching lights on at the floor level of the farm around here and that should hopefully keep enough of the ice unmelted in here that uh, if you end up uh, coming through and harvesting all of the ice you can basically turn the farm back on again at that point that is the idea at least now let's start building up the flying machines on either end what i have done is set up a row of furnaces below these blocks here just to act as unpushable blocks we had a few furnaces left over thankfully and i was able to put a row of six underneath this block at the end here and that is quite important because the pistons are going to be pushing those blocks down as well and we're going to have to offset the flying machine by one block so if it's going to push this row here it's also going to be pushing these rows of blocks here just by nature of the uh, by virtue of the fact that that's how flying machines are designed so I'm going to hop up here, go up one block, and this is where we're going to start building the flying machine. We're going to have a sticky piston facing this way, a slime block there. We're going to have a sticky piston facing this way with a slime block attached to it. And then from each of these, we're going to build out two more slime blocks, creating the arms of the flying machine like so. We're going to hop down underneath here using our elytra to crouch a little bit, and we're going to place a regular piston here and here and also here yes there we go so all of those are facing downwards we're going to do that with this wing here at the back as well one there one there and finally one there there we go okay so all of those are facing downwards too now each of these slime blocks is going to have an observer over the top of it normally in a flying machine we'd only have an observer over the central slime blocks there and there but the observers as they move are also going to be firing these downwards facing pistons and that's what's going to be pushing the ice down through this floor now there is a stone brick floor still underneath here but the pistons will just push those blocks as well and of course the ice will make sure that no water escapes from underneath it's basically going to form a solid floor then we can reclaim all of the stone brick from underneath there and that's going to allow us to just have ice getting pushed through the entire time so i guess we'll set up the observers now we want to avoid activating the observers there and there but to either side we can place one there and one there and one 
here, uh, oh, uh, not there, here and here. And then if we take these two out now, we should be able to place the observers facing downwards into those as well. Just add that sticky piston back in. There we go. This flying machine is all set. And once it activates, it should push all of this ice downwards into the farm. Now, the next thing to do is to set up two uh, return stations on either side so that when the flying machine reaches the end of this farm, it just comes back the same direction and these are going to be a little bit different to the returning stations that we have built in the past because this flying machine is a little bit different it has pistons attached to the bottom here normally when we built one of these return stations let me just quickly draft one up here as an example you'd build an observer detecting when an observer came in to dock at the top there we would have some sort of immovable block behind it like a furnace in this case and then we would have a piece of redstone this repeater set to two or four ticks and then an iron trap door here and when the observers came into dock here it would flip this trap door up and down if you had a redstone dust on top of the furnace like that it would flip the trap door up and down and that would immediately return the flying machine the problem with that design for this is that when the flying machine comes into dock, these pistons underneath fire one more time. And what I have found when I was testing this in my creative test world is that the pistons firing actually meant that when the flying machine moved away again, it didn't bring these pistons with them because they were still extended and you cannot push a piston while it is extended. So what I have done instead is design another... Oh, <laughs> I completely broke all of the ice there. What I've done instead is design another uh, slightly longer delay return station over here, which is fairly simple to build. Shouldn't really take us all that long if I just grab some andesite and come out here. So this observer here is the one we're going to be detecting coming in. We're going to put that there and we're going to put a furnace underneath that as the immovable block that's going to prevent the flying machine from pushing any further this way and breaking the redstone circuit here. You could also use, you know, any other immovable block like obsidian or whatever uh let's see we've got some andesite coming out the back here we want two of those and a third that will come up like that and on these two blocks here facing this way we're going to place a repeater and set it to four ticks each time like so so we have a total of eight ticks coming out of there we're going to place andesite blocks over the top of those and we're going to surround this with redstone dust over the top like that and on top of the observer there we're going to place an iron trapdoor here. Any kind of trapdoor will do, but we've got the iron ones on us. Uh, we're not going to do that yet because there is the need for an identical return station on the opposite side here. So I'll need to go and do that before I set the flying machine going in the first place. So that's going to be one block over this way. On the left, we're going to build up and out one block because we want the flying machine to make sure it gets this last row of ice blocks here as well. So yeah, that's where the observer is going to be on the top there. We're going to have a furnace placed underneath that, of course, but we'll put the observer here first to detect when that's coming in. The furnace is going to go underneath there to stop the flying machine in the first place. We build out two blocks in the back and one block up and then place our repeaters coming out of the observer once again. Set that to four ticks, set that to four ticks, build over the top of there like so. We'll put the redstone dust along the top like that, and we can attach the trap door to the front of that redstone dust there. So it's not getting in the way of the observer there, it's attached to the redstone dust on the block above where the other observer is going to come into dock. We can take that block there out if we want to, that's not necessary, and that should be ready to return our flying machine when it makes it all the way down here. So I'm going to go and quickly sleep to make sure it's daytime when we do this test, but hopefully everything should go according to plan. And like I said, this first test is going to push all of the ice down through here. So what we should see is that the water sources flow in towards the center, but they will not reform. That's absolutely fine. Once we end up putting all of the water sources back in here, this flying machine should be fast enough on its sweeps that it shouldn't allow the ice to refreeze in a large enough quantity that it's going to prevent us from reforming water sources in here. And of course, if it does that, then we could potentially just, uh, you know, adjust the amount of time that it takes the flying machine to go over here. We could, we could shorten the farm or we could break up the furnaces here so that there are more water sources in here, that kind of thing. Anyway, I had to take out the block under there because I realized it was going to attach to the slime block. But now, if we end up putting a trap door here, that should set the flying machine going. And perfect, as you can see, it is now pushing all of the ice downwards. It's not done this first row here because it was actually resting on that at the time and the observers need to move in order to activate those lower pistons. But you can see what this is now doing is pushing all of the ice down into 
to the underside of the farm. And as it goes, it's also pushing out all of those stone brick blocks. So we could take those out now because this entire thing is going to be uh, basically floored with ice now, which means no water will be able to get out either. And once the flying machine gets to the other end of the farm, there are a couple of blocks in here that haven't frozen as part of the, uh, the ice formations here. But now that should return it. And yep, there we go. The delay in that trapdoor is long enough that the pistons don't get stuck and it's able to continue down the rest of the farm. That's absolutely perfect. Now all I should need to do is go around and refill some of these water sources which have been broken by the amount of ice we allowed to form there and hopefully that should be enough time <laughs> for the flying machine to get back here and it will only have reformed a couple of blocks of ice. Let's uh, let's see if that works. And now that we have repaired all of the water sources in the farm, this should now be able to freeze over at its own pace. But hopefully the flying machine should come back down here in enough time that it's not going to completely break the water sources in here and end up with flowing water because the flowing water will not refreeze. Really Ultimately, what we have is a set of random kind of ice blocks appearing in each one and it should freeze more and more towards the center as it goes but really what we're going to end up with is a lot of ice around the outsides here and a little bit less in the center maybe but that should ultimately be fine and what we're going to end up with is a bunch of ice getting pushed down underneath here you can see already that this has happened in some places as the flying machine has gone back it's taken a couple of these ice blocks a little bit further down and there is really no pattern to ice freezing and it happens kind of randomly but the more solid blocks it has contact with the more likely it is that the ice is going to form and as the flying machine makes its way down here you should start to see each of these yet reforming perfectly without any floors any running water anything like that that should be totally fine now the next step really is to make sure that once the flying machines have pushed a bunch of ice out underneath these that the whole thing doesn't completely freeze over and there are a couple of ways in which we can do that i've thought of one or two because eventually the pistons are going to push enough material down here that it's going to make contact with the ground and then the pistons won't be able to push in that area anymore which means that whatever ice forms will stay on the surface and we're not always going to be around to harvest that ice so how do we get around that the main thing i've thought of is to have an observer randomly placed under maybe each one of these cells or it could just be one observer that powers the entire thing and what that's going to do is when a block comes into contact with it it's going to activate a t flip-flop switch which is going to turn on a bunch of redstone lamps on the surface of the farm so what we're going to do is have two redstone lamps each on either side of this set of furnaces we're either going to have one there and one there and maybe we'll have them this close or maybe we'll just space them out so they are one block further apart it really depends how far the light goes but these are not going to be swept up by the flying machines because they won't attach to any slime blocks and there is that six block gap in between that the pistons are going to shuffle through and what these are going to do is light up when an observer down here detects that the ice column has been completely pushed to the ground like there for example you just saw it happen there there might be a couple of others here as well that end up reaching the ground as the flying machines go past and that's going to be detected by an observer down here the observer will activate a t flip-flop which is just going to push a sticky piston up next to that redstone lamp and that's going to switch the redstone lamp on what that will do is spread out light in a wide enough area that none of the water sources up here will be able to freeze into ice and that any existing ice that's up here will start to melt and as a result the farm is going to be completely clear everything here is going to be a water source and we can see thanks to the redstone lamps that the farm is ready to harvest once we get over here we uh, remove all of the ice we remove the ice from those observers that's going to update them again the redstone lamps will turn off and the farm will be able to go active again now naturally thanks to the way the ice is forming in here this is going to be a little bit random and it's also going to rely quite heavily on us taking a signal from somewhere in the center of these clusters because those are the blocks that are least likely to receive a full column of ice down here so we we ideally want this to be as full as possible before we end up harvesting the entire thing just so we have a nice big block of ice instead of this kind of random assortment of ice we've got here but remember those blocks in the middle are more likely to refreeze if they have ice next to them which they will do eventually once those pistons can no longer push the ice blocks down so i think what we're going to do is go into each of these cells and take a block from the middle like a block around here for example there you go that's a little bit scary standing in that while it's running and uh 
Bit of a lag spike? Yeah, okay, just a bit of a lag spike. Nothing to worry about. I think we're going to take a block from the middle as our observer sample. We're just going to create a simple kind of T-flip-flop circuit, which is going to have an observer, and we'll just have, like, note block observer chains running out from the center of the farm, like so. And then, ultimately, the last observer is going to push a redstone block into a redstone lamp, like so. If we put the redstone lamp over here, uh, where did that go? There it is. So when the ice reaches this observer like so, that gets pushed against that, the redstone lamp turns on, that happens on both sides, and we end up with a completely lit up farm where none of the ice refreezes. And my hope is that thanks to the amount that water reduces light level, it's not going to light up any of the rest of the farm. But if it does, all we need to do is move the redstone lamps up a couple of blocks and the result will effectively be the same. You know, I liked that whole design. I liked the idea of having the redstone lamps and these redstone detectors with, you know, the ice getting cut off at a certain time. It felt clever. Almost too clever. And I, f I decided that I was overthinking it and over-engineering this entire thing when, when really all I needed to do was think back to the ice farm we made originally and just downscale it to a series of cells like this. Because, of course, once you have this diagonal of water sources held there by slabs that aren't going to get pushed downwards because they now have furnaces, um, immovable blocks underneath them, then that's always going to be able to refresh the water there no matter what. Even if it gets pushed out of the way again, the water sources here are always going to reform with no need for fancy redstone, with no need for, for, you know, redstone lamps to come on and all of these extra components. And this was going to be so expensive to do, <laughs> it turned out. I wasn't even able to do it in the kind of test thing that I did. I thought I'd set up a couple of these and I recorded a section of the episode where I said, well, we're going to have to go away and make a bunch more redstone components. And I thought, no, we, we actually don't have to do that. We can just make the farm like this. We have these extra blocks along the sides here. I filled in all of the slabs, basically, because I realized that we didn't need the waterlogged slabs on either side if this diagonal across the middle was going to be resupplying the entire thing with water sources. And so now that provides additional solid blocks for the ice to form against, and it should actually make the uh, the ice form in the farm faster, which means we'll be able to harvest it more frequently and get a higher yield out of it. And I had harvested the ice that we got out of the initial design and it gave me quite a lot, but this really hasn't reduced the amount of ice we were getting all that much. If anything, I think it might be about the same. And so I think the only thing that is left for us to do at this point is to switch it on and give it a try and make sure everything is working fine. Once again, I should point out that there are furnaces underneath each of those slabs, the waterlogged slabs, just so the pistons, when I activate them, do not push them out of place. But yeah, this whole over-engineering thing with the redstone, it was sort of unnecessary in the grand scheme of things. Now, if I come back up here and I place this trap door, we should have everything maneuvered into position. And now... Yeah, there you go. All of that ice can get pushed downwards. The water sources immediately reform in each of these areas. I think that one got missed out just because it was, you know, not aligned with the pistons correctly. And some of this ice is already starting to form up again behind the flying machine. But it does seem to be pushing everything down at the right sort of pace, which is great stuff. In the meantime, while I'm down here, I think I'll probably fill in the rest of this spruce platform, but it looks like everything is performing as it should do. It is pushing some of the old stone bricks out of place, but I can always remove those as well. And yeah, it doesn't look like any of the slabs have gotten pushed down already, which is great. Now, the best thing about this design is even though these ice blocks are forming up, they won't actually form up completely. It won't have the, the full area filled up by the time the flying machine has made its way back. But of course, once these reach kind of capacity, once the piston has pushed it down as far as they can go, those will stay in the farm and will prompt the other ice blocks to form around them, meaning that the whole thing should eventually fill up with this kind of like split cube of ice underneath here and we can already see those starting to form up underneath here and we have a couple of I think I might have broken those with the wrong pickaxe you know I've got my uh, my fortune pickaxe instead of my silk touch on some of these and with no water sources flowing that looks like it's performing flawlessly great stuff so I'm going to take this down I'm actually going to wait for the farm to finish producing all of these ice cubes and then I'm going to mine the entire thing out and we'll see how much we get out of the farm now I think this is 
is as good as it's going to get and it looks a little bit more hollow from a distance because of the weird transparency issues with these blocks. I'm kind of interested to see how the new lighting engine, the new rendering engine uh, uh, figures that out. But anyway, we're going to take down the entire yield of this farm, which isn't, as you can see, completely filling up in some places because what I've noticed happens, and this is a little bit of a design flaw, but ultimately not one that's going to result in the farm completely breaking, is that the pistons, when they come through, if this section here, say, is blocked off and they cannot reform ice here fast enough, it will actually push the piston down into this space, eliminating the water source. And I really wish there was something you could do about that, but the only thing I can think of to do, really, would be to have a slab on the underside of the piston or some sort of block that could be waterlogged. So when you pushed it down into one of these, you know, water sources, it wouldn't actually destroy the water source. But of course, the problem with that is that the sticky pistons won't carry, won't like bring the blocks with them in the same way that slime blocks will. So it seems like there might be an elegant solution to that, but I can't really think of it right now. Either way, once we have eliminated all of the ice on this platform, or rather once the uh, ice underneath has been removed and the pistons can push downwards. As you'll see, that diagonal allows the water sources to reform again. So it's absolutely not going to break the farm, except in the cases of ghost blocks, like just happened there, or a bit of a, a lag spike, I guess. It's just going to mean that this entire thing doesn't fill up with a neat cube of ice, which, to be honest, I can live with at this stage. I just want to take down this entire thing and see how much ice we get. So I'm going to spend a bit of time doing that as long as I don't end up breaking into the water sources on the surface. It should be plain sailing and I'll see you guys down the other end of the farm once we've got a bunch of ice. Well, that's it. That's the farm. That's the whole thing collected up, give or take. There are a couple of blocks here and there where I think I just didn't put enough filler material inside of here to make sure that the blocks didn't get pushed down into the floor. We've got one or two over there, and I think a couple of blocks may even have ended up going over the side here and there. I think I saw a couple down there earlier. Maybe I went and got those. I don't know. But anyway, let's take a look at what we've got. That's not even the chest I was using. This is the chest, and we've got over a full single chest, I guess, of ice in a single yield of this farm. That is not bad going. Of course, remember that you need nine ice to make one packed ice, so that is at least three stacks of packed ice right there and a little bit extra. Now let's see what happens if we want to turn all of this into blue ice, which I'm sure is going to be something we end up using this farm for if I am done farming out the icebergs eventually. Let's turn all of that into packed ice, and then we get... 18 blue ice <laughs> and then five ice and some packed ice left over but that's to be honest not bad and once we get the flying machines running again and once this thing is producing regularly we can basically have all the ice we want for decorating some of the builds here in this ice biome and you know what i'm happy with that i think the farm turned out pretty well in the end and i'm glad i went through a bit of a redesign phase for it because i think the farm is better for it and i hope you guys agree i hope you enjoyed this episode of the minecraft survival guide please leave a like on it if you did subscribe if you want to see more and i'll see you guys soon take care bye for now